Check this. Well, we have a very active presence in China yeah. with offices in Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong. It's one of the key markets in Asia that we do invest in. Listen, I think the days of benign globalization are clearly behind us in terms of a, a global macro. The geopolitical complexity has increased pretty dramatically in the last five years. And we're at a point in time where there's more great power competition between mm -hmm. the U.S. and China. And as investors, I think what that really means is we have to be much more prudent in terms of how we invest in China, recognizing both the sensitivities of the Chinese government and the U.S. government. Just to, just to uh, remind ourselves and uh, for viewers as well, uh, how much do we have sunk into China and what are the projects? We have around $6 billion invested in China. And our core focus has really been around the sweet spot of what we think the market opportunity is, domestic consumption, okay. catering to that growing middle class of 400 million people in China with more disposable income as they pursue a higher quality food, higher quality services. So we've invested in companies like the largest pet food company in China, the lightest lighting, fix lighting fixtures company in China, okay. uh, retail pharmacy chains in China, domestic liquor and alcohol brands in China. Okay, that's that's so, pretty consumer, right? Yeah. It's all consumer uh, driven. So the focus has not been around some of these sensitive areas in technology, yeah. like semiconductors and AI and supercomputing, where there's currently significant competition and sensitivity on both sides okay. uh, of the aisle.